Good evening. Today I want to talk about the microfinance section. Microfinance actually started not in India but in Bangladesh. When a Nobel laureate started a bank called Grameen Bank. The idea was if you give small amount of loans to the very poor people, those poor people would use that to start a business and they were very prompt in paying back the money and very prompt in paying back the money. And many of them in Bangladesh got out of the poverty line. So what kind of business they started? In fact, a lady in Bangladesh bought a cell phone and used it as a call center for her friends to talk to their husbands who are based in Gulf and other places. Because Bangladesh is a big exporter of human labor. Several people grew chicken, egg, cows and goats and business flourished. He demonstrated that this is a profitable business model. Immediately, the bandwagon started all over the world and it also came to India. In India, one of the first well-known microfinance institutions was SKS Micro. It was started with great hype by a man called Vikram Akula. It was very successful and he also took the company public and several anchor investors such as Narayan Murthy invested it at more than 1000 rupees a share. But then a lot of stories came about Vikram Akula which we do not know whether it is true or not. SK Micro collapsed and the company was taken over by and him changed its name to Bharat Inclusion and later it was acquired as in by Indus in Bank and today is a subsidiary of Indus in Bank. But there are more successful versions like what you see with Bandhan Bank and Equitas Small Finance Bank which all started as microfinance institutions and became very successful. So microfinance is basically an industry which services money to the very poor. There is a strict limit to which they can lend. In urban areas, it is limited to people who earn maximum of 2 lakhs a year. So somebody earning 15 to 20,000 rupees money will qualify for a microfinance loan. There are strict regulations by Reserve Bank of India and therefore you cannot lend to more richer clients. But what happens is that they charge a higher rate. So banks are very keen to finance microfinance institutions and that is why Indus in Bank has a subsidiary. Even Manapuram, a gold loan company has a subsidiary. Even all the large NBFCs have a subsidiary microfinance company because this is one of the most profitable ways to make money for finance companies. And the NPA levels are very low. Contrary to many expectations, NPAs are highest in large corporates and lowest among farmers and these kind of small and microfinance borrowers. Why, why am I discussing this today? Because all the microfinance industries together have made a request to the Reserve Bank of India. They now say that inflation has been raging in India for several years and this limit that they have set was a long time ago and inflation has taken its ravages and therefore microfinance institutions want the limit to go to 3 lakhs. What they are now saying is that anybody who gets about 25,000 rupees salary in a year should be given eligible for microfinance loans. Today, there are 50 million customers who are eligible for microfinance in India. That is, there are many more people eligible, but microfinance institutions find only 50 million people to whom they can lend and get collect money. If this salary level is expanded, it is expected another 60 million people will join this group. Then it will become 1.1 million. So 1.1 million people will be eligible to take loans and this will mean that the base of the microfinance industry will double and you will feel a great explosion in sales and also more banking will reach more people. This is in fact, well, if the RBA decides to do this, this would be a welcome step. This will mean that credit becomes easily available to all 
the people who deserve credit. If people, if you have any experience of you taking credit from bank, you will find private banks chasing you for consumer borrowing. What is consumer borrowing? Suppose you want to buy a cell phone, you will get an easy loan. You want to buy a bike, you will get a loan. You want to spend some small money, you will get a personal loan. But if you want money for business, you won't get loan. Because private banks want to be in areas where it is very profitable, where they can spend consumption and normally to salaried people and sure they can collect the money back. They are not involved in businesses which take risk. That is, they don't want to finance uh, small and medium enterprise and MSME. This involves risk. They will do so only with collateral and it is basically a lap arrangement. A lap is nothing but a loan against property. If you have property, they will give you a loan. Otherwise, they won't give you a loan. So, if this is true for small and medium, then micro enterprises will find it very difficult to get money. If you, if the definition is expanded, it means the small and medium mom and pop showrooms will start getting money easier and things will become easier for them. Like I already told you in a, program, in a video a couple of days back, Facebook, Amazon and uh, Flipkart have already started finance their, financing their merchants. That is, if their merchandise is sold through Flipkart or Amazon and last 12 months you have done a great turnover, based on that turnover, they have tied up with an NBFC to give you finance at a nominal rate with an implicit agreement that Amazon will deduct from your turnover and pay him the money so that Amazon becomes a third-party guarantor and Amazon will collect finding fee from that NBFC to make it very lucrative for them. Same is the case, Google will come up with it. If you go through Google Pay, you will find already they are selling mutual funds and they are already selling bank deposits. Time is not far off when they will start selling loans. Paytm has 10% of the micro loan market, not as a lender, but as an aggregator. That is, it collects loans and gives to other people. So, it would be very unfair of RBI to stop the small guy from getting loans. I hope the Reserve Bank passes these rules to expand it to 3 lakhs as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching Be Rich. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification. हिंदी में एक चैनल शुरू करूं तो मैंने एक पैसा बोलता है नाम का एक हिंदी चैनल शुरू किया है मैं पर्सनल निवेश के बारे में भी बात करूंगा आप उसको सब्सक्राइब करें अपने दोस्तों को शेयर करें अगर आप हिंदी नहीं जानते हैं तो पैसा करें जो आपके दोस्त हिंदी जानते हैं उनको सब्सक्राइब करने के लिए आग्रह करें धन्यवाद नमस्कार